So we have our REST API here. We also have our admin where we can go and manage campaigns and also subscriptions. So now let's go ahead and deploy our Django backend to Heroku. And then we're gonna be deploying the, the front end in the next one. So Heroku is a managed service. So they give us the infrastructure. They also give us other add-ons or other resources like a database. So, so they do heavy lifting for our deployment for us. So to deploy our Django application to Heroku, we are going to be using a module called Django Heroku. We also are going to have to use G Unicorn. So that's going to be our server. So let me bring it up. Also, we are going to work with something called white noise. So white noise will be responsible to serve our static assets. We also are going to use something called DJ database URL. So this makes it easy to configure our database using one connection string. And in our development process, we've been using SQLite, but we're going to be switching that one up for Postgres because Heroku doesn't actually work well with SQLite. So since SQLite is file-based, Heroku's infrastructure doesn't really support that. So what we're going to do is set it up to use Postgres now Let's start here. So we need to install Django Heroku. So whenever we install Django Heroku, it's going to install white noise. It's also going to go ahead and uh, install Psycho PG2, which is a database connector for Postgres and, and Python. Django Heroku. Just run that command. So then the next thing we're going to need to do is in our settings.py, we want to go to settings py. So we need to import it. So right here, we can import it. Then the next thing you're gonna need to do is to add this line here to configure it to pick up the settings. So we're gonna go at the end of this file and just add that line. From the documentation, it goes ahead to set up white noise. So this is gonna be useful if we are going to be seeing like this CSS that, that is used to render this page here. So what we'll do is on the white noise documentation, we basically need to do another step and that is to add the white noise middleware in our list of middlewares. So I'm going to copy that line there and go to the list of middlewares. So they suggest to put it after security middleware. So we can just bring it here. Just have a comma there. So now that we have that, then we can install G Unicorn. And that's going to be our, our server that Heroku is going to be used to serve our, is going to be using to serve our application. So whenever we are running Python manage.py run server, we have a local development server that Django sets up for us, but that's not suitable for production and uh, we just need to use another server. So basically whenever we install G Unicorn, what we need to do is we need to tell it where our application will be and tell Heroku how it should run G Unicorn. So Heroku uses a special file called broke file. So I'm gonna go in our backend folder and I'm gonna create a file called proc file. So in the proc file, we're gonna add this piece of code here. So the deployment goes through different phases. So here we are saying that whenever we are in the release phase, we should go ahead and run and make migrations and also migrate if we, are, if we have any other new migrations that are not yet synced to the DB. And then we go ahead and add a command that Heroku should use to be able to serve our application. So for the web process, we want to run G Unicorn, then we have to point to where our WSJ file is. So if you look at in our folders here, we have this folder for CM backend, which is like the entry point to our project. And that's where our WSJ file is. That's what we want to put here in front of G Unicorn. So now that we have this one out of the way, then we need to tell Heroku about where our our project dependencies would be such that it knows how to run the project, you know. So what we need to do is we need to create a requirements for txt file and in there put in all the requirements that we are using in our project. Now, since we are using an environment, now since we are using a virtual environment like we're using here, then we can be able to get all our dependencies by doing pip freeze. So we want to do pip freeze. And we are going to freeze into a file called requirements.txt. So requirements txt like this. So when we run that, you can see we have a requirements txt file created. 
and that's going to contain everything we are uh, every dependency that we are using in the project so one other thing we are going to need to do before we go is uh, we're going to switch the way we are using the secret key here so we're going to move it away to an environment variable and then we are going to be using an environment variable to pull it in so we don't want to expose it since it's used for many things by Django on our application so here what we want to do is we want to do OS environment so we want to pick it from an environment variable and Heroku actually does this by default so you just need to reference it so Heroku actually pulls it from an environment variable by default so we also want to make sure we are doing that so whenever we add any so we need to update our .env file so since I'm on Linux since I'm on Mac now then we can use export secret key because secret key equals the secret key so I'm just gonna put something here just something random so if you're in Windows you wanna have a .env.bat file and that's what you wanna contain our your stuff so it's gonna look something like this so on Windows you're gonna have something that looks like this on Mac whenever you update your virtual whenever you update your environment file or your .env file you want to update your terminal to be able to pick up those new values by running source then the name of the file which is .env but on Windows you want to call call then in your case it's going to be env.env.bat like that but that's not going to work on, on, on Mac anyway so we need to also update our 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 env sample file since those .env files are not going to be in uh, are not going to be in in version control we want to make sure that we want to make sure we want to make sure that next time we are checking out this project we are going to need to know what we need to set up as environment variables by looking at the example file for env so next thing we're going to need to do is create a git repository and push our code to git and then heroku can deploy it from there so go to github so github.com so here what i want to do is create a new repository so I'm gonna call this I'm gonna call this CM backend API. We're gonna copy the example commands they give us here. And I'm just gonna repress them. I'm just gonna paste them here in backend. And that's going to create a git repository for our backend. So the next thing we're gonna to need to do is create a .git ignore file because we don't we don't wanna push the .env files and also the fetch environment files. So here let's create a .git ignore file. So in the .git ignore, the quickest way to have a .git ignore is to use .git ignore.io. So you come here, you put in your technology. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to put in Django here. I don't know why it's using French these days. So when you put in Django, they can give you a starter for the things that a Django project shouldn't expose in version control. So the next. So when we add that, you can see like PyCache is, is ignored. You can see, oh, these are not ignored, I believe. So let's go ahead and ignore these two. So in the, where is this? Oh, we need to make sure it's in the root. Huh? Yeah, so now you can see our .env is ignored and also the PyCaches are ignored. Let's also go and, and ignore the .env .bat. So dot env. Oh, so we are seeing this one here too. So dot env dot bat. Okay, and that's gonna also ignore this as you can see. So I'm gonna actually use a branch here. So git checkout minus p ch deploy. That's for the branch name. And if you wanna run git from me. Be sure to leave that in the comments i will be sure to to make videos about it but there are some videos that are very already available but if you want mine specifically just mention that and i will be happy to create them so git commit minus m then we want to say deploy project oh we need to put git at first so git that then let's push this to github so git push so we need to push to this branch so let's go on there and create a pull request 
So the pre project is create a pull request. For now, we are just gonna merge it in because really, yeah, we, we just wanna get this thing deployed. So now that we've merged it in, I'm gonna copy the name there and I'm gonna go to Heroku and say, create a new app. So I'm gonna give it the name. Let's see if this one is available. It's not, oh, we need to get this one away. Oh, there's a space here, sorry. Okay, so we just use this. Then we just create an app. So now to deploy, we wanna go to the deploy section, then we wanna click on GitHub. You can use the Heroku CLI, but using GitHub makes it easy that whenever we push code to GitHub, Heroku can go ahead and pick it up and deploy the newest code without you actually redeploying. So if you have not connected to GitHub, you're gonna have a button to like connect GitHub that's gonna ask you to authorize Heroku and it's gonna get your account here. Once that's done, you wanna search for the project you wanna connect. Then this is the one we wanna connect. I'm gonna click there. So we want to enable automatic deploys. So that means next time we push to GitHub, it should deploy Heroku every time we push to main on GitHub. So let's go ahead and deploy main right now. So now locally, since we, we used another branch, I'm gonna check out the main branch. And I'm gonna pull to make sure the, my local main branch is the same as the, the remote main branch. So now we need to change our database. Instead of using SQRites to use Postgres. So let's move down here. You see this is using SQRites, so this is what we wanna change. Oh, our so our deployment failed here. So let's go ahead and set an environment variable that should disable correct static. So what you can do is in the settings, you wanna click on reveal verse. So you wanna set this, let's set it to one. So we don't want it to collect static when it's deploying. We are gonna be, everything is gonna be managed by white noise. We need to retry the deployment. So let's go back down and deploy branch. Yeah, so like I was saying, we need to change our database to use Postgres. And we're gonna be using DJ database URL to set that one up. But we are going to be using the Postgres database that Heroku gives us. So let's wait for Heroku to first set it, set it up for us, and then we can use that. Also, our application ran into an error. That's because I added a code that wasn't correct. So let's go ahead and correct that. So where we said os.environ, let's see. That was funny. So one hundred dot get here. So for now, I'm just going to push this to main so it can we can deploy quickly. Fix code, then this push to main. So now that we've pushed, this should go ahead and start redeploying again. So if you come here and click on overview, you can see that the build is now in progress and we didn't actually go ahead and deploy again. So it's just picked up the new changes. So let, let, let it deploy and we see where it gets to. So as it deploys, so as it deploys, I want to also go ahead and set up this. So we wanna go ahead and install it. So we, so we wanna go ahead and install it. So we wanna click uh, that. Then we wanna install DJ database URL. And of course you can use the normal way of setting up a database. So here, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, so here you could come in and you change the engine and you change the database, but you're gonna have to write like five lines of code, which we are, I just want to avoid by using this module here. So Heroku actually uses this to configure databases. So with this module, whenever we have a connection string in as an environment variable, we only have to do this, add this line here, and it's going to pick up the, the connection string by default. So if we want to hard code it inside the code, then we can use this here where we say DJ database URL dot pass. So basically this is gonna allow us to, to, to pass the connection string itself. You know, it's gonna have some random characters. So you wanna use pass to make sure that Django database URL picks it up correctly. So for us, we're gonna be having it in an environment variable. So we wanna have just this line here and we're just going to put it after the databases just so we can repress this. We can repress the default one. So let's make sure we have the import. 
So we need to set the secret key too. So you wanna go to settings and go to reveal and set the secret key. So I'm just gonna set it to secret key here. So notice how Django, notice how Heroku was able to set up a database URL for us. So we also wanna change this. We wanna go to our settings. We wanna go to our .env. So like here, we want to have something like this. So use this syntax when if you're in Windows. So the value for this is gonna be this whole string. I'm just gonna copy it and bring it here. So you can see it's very random. And that's why we need to use pass if you are going to, to use the pass syntax and not use an environment variable. So let's use this here. And uh, of course we need to use export. So let's make sure our aim sample is, is updated. Git commit. We can say add db connection string. Let's push it. So now Heroku should try to deploy again. Let's go here. So the deployment has started. Hopefully we don't get any any other issues. But just like just like you can see, whenever we get issues, we are still able to fix them. So let's wait to see how this let's wait to see how this one now behaves. All right. So it looks like this one is done now. So when I click on open app, this time it's actually opening here. So you can see it opens here, and we have our API. So if you if you ever want to create like an admin user so they can be able to log in and manage campaigns, you can go here in Heroku, then you wanna go to run console. And here you can run command like you're running it on your Django server. So you can do python manage.py, create super user. Let's make sure our database is, create, is also linked. So create super user, let's run that. So let's give the username, I'm just gonna put Christ truly here. Email, I just use Christ truly Gmail. Password. The password that never gets old. It's too common, I'm sure. So you can see we are able to create a super user, meaning that the database is linked. So now that means we should be able to go to the admin section by doing slash admin and here I guess and here we can log in so I'm gonna use the Christ truly and my newest password now for you to be able to add a campaign you're going to need certain environment variables for Cloudinary to be able to upload images so you can go to the settings then you want to go to config verse which is here then you can add your settings here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add mine and then we can test out the addition of campaigns. So in the dos env, we're going to need all this stuff. Be sure to use yours. If you use this, they won't work. That's one I promise you. So let me use this. Then this one is also test. Obviously, this is just dummy. I just don't want you guys to see my credentials. But you can use yours that you can get from the Cloudinary your Cloudinary page. So be sure to get yours and then you make sure you have them here. You have them, you have them set. All right, so once you're done setting up, then you can come and test out this. So we wanna just create a simple campaign. Let's make sure we can upload. I'm gonna click up, choose picture. So I'm gonna choose any picture I find close. I'll just choose mine for our app. I'll click save. And you can see it gets it goes ahead to be created. So that means that in our API, so in our documentation, I want to make sure we can be able to fetch the one we just added. And you can see we get it. So thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you next time.